Today I want to take the time and talk to you about sowing a seed. Let's talk about it. What's going on Close to the God Ministries? Welcome back to another Righteous Field, another Spirit Field episode. Today I hope to get you closer to the truth, closer to kingdom, closer to God's will. Man, in scripture, in the Bible, it talks a lot about sowing a seed. Putting a seed in soil, God fertilizing it, we us harvesting the fruit. But many of us don't understand this because we don't live like God's people live. You know, in elementary school, they did this thing that is for most of us, for many of us, this is the most that we've ever done when it comes to sowing a seed. They give you a paper towel, they give you some sort of seed, you moisten that paper towel, you put the seed in there, you close it up, put it in a Ziploc bag, put it in the window seed, and you watch it grow. That's for many of us, you know, that went to public school, this is what we know of sowing a seed. And I want you to understand that God's people were shepherds, they were farmers. So when we think of a seed, the only thing we think about is, okay, we get oranges from the grocery store, it has a seed in it. But we don't never really practice the origins of sowing a seed because we don't grow our own food, we don't live like God's people live. Many of you are gonna sow a seed. And I want, I want to tell you that in every step of gardening, in every phase of garden, there's a season that you can grow certain things and there's a season that you can't. And this is something that I've had the pleasure of doing with my family and my wife, you know, taking a pine gardening and seeing the fruits actually manifest, you know, into something bigger than just the seed it started out with. And that is a blessing. Man, we started a garden and we were met with conflict by my dogs who I don't think meant any harm, but with all of the labor that we put into sowing a seed, it was destroyed with very minimal effort by my two dogs. And today's message, I wanna tell you that any seed that you sow in this new year in time forward and in the future, you must be willing to labor. What does that mean? Let's talk about it, okay? I sow a seed, I have to find some soil that is righteous, okay? And I don't want to put my seed in contaminated soil, you know, soil that's been soaked with oil, all kind of contaminants, all kind of toxins, because that is going to stagnate or uh, eliminate the growth of the seed that I planted. So what do you do? You visualize, okay, let me find some land. Let me find some land that looks right, looks like it is the right, the right soil density, the right type of foundation in order for me to plant a seed. And then you do that. And when I talk about laboring your sowing seed, you can even take this into a woman birthing a child. And this is where the term going in labor comes from. Many of us don't, many of us don't understand that. That's gonna go over your head, but it's okay. I'm gonna break it down for you. So a man plant a seed in a woman, whether or not you want it to, God is going to fertilize it. You have people out there that can't even have children. You have men that don't even have a seed. You have women that don't have fertile land. And for some of us, we go planting seeds that we don't plan on laboring. I'm guilty of it. I'm guilty of it. And I will tell you, the work me and my wife put into the garden and establish the garden when I'm out there setting it up, when I met Lowe's getting the equipment, my wife was there hand in hand helping me sow the seed and labor the land, okay? So when you talk about childbirth, a lot of us, when it comes to parenting, we don't wanna do any teaching and the world grows up our children and we don't like the outcome. But I wanna tell you that in the planting of sowing a seed in a woman, God fertilizes it, brings it to life, and then a woman goes into labor. The time to work is now. So the baby comes and you're like, man, whoo, I'm glad that's over. And I can only imagine, you know, the pain that one woman has to go through in order to bring a child into this world. But 
That is why in scripture it tells us that labor is going to be painful. And it's the same thing with everything else in life. You know, don't nobody like laboring, but many of us will sow a seed in this new year and not want to labor it. I've done it time and time again, time and time again, year after year, resolution after resolution. And let me tell you something to God be the glory for every day that me and my wife were able to get out in the garden, you know, water the garden, spend time moving the soil, getting it to be the right, you know, uh, right. The seed was at the right depth, making sure, you know, the soil wasn't overpowering. The seed wasn't too deep in there and things like that. And we did this process over and over and over and over again. And then with all our labor, with all our sacrifice, with all our hard work, we started seeing little bell peppers. We started seeing little watermelons. And that right there is the greatest feeling in knowing that you have labored the seed that you have sowed. And for me, I can honestly tell you for many years, most of my adult life, you know, I planted many seeds and paid them no mind in thinking that it was going to take anything short of painful labor in order, in order to see them harvested. And this is where I want to talk about real celebration. In the Bible, it talks about what we should celebrate and what we should refrain from. One celebration that many of you do not know about is the celebration of the harvest of first fruits. And remember in the beginning, I said there's a season to plant everything. Many people don't understand this. You know, there is no purpose or no righteousness in trying to plant watermelons in the beginning of winter. They can't survive. It's not the climate for it. But I was doing that in my own life, planting seeds whenever I wanted to plant them and then saying, hey, because it's not going to grow, I'm not going to labor it. I'm not going to pray over it. I'm not going to sacrifice over it. But I tell you, if you have a hard time understanding what God's desire is for us, what God's will is, I ask you to pray, reinforce yourself with scripture, put your eyes on the scripture. Just because somebody else said it makes you feel good, it makes you want to jump around, fix your eyes upon it so you know that it's true. And read about all of the harvest, all of the sowing of seeds that God's people did, and you will understand the kind of labor, the kind of intensity that it's going to take in order for you to harvest the fruit. And let me tell you something, for many years, I would plant the seed and I wouldn't do no labor and I would come back and expect to harvest. But how can a farmer plant a seed in not the right season, in not fertile soil, not do no labor? Any, if anybody knows, you know, about what it takes to garden, about what it takes to actually farm the land. That's not work or labor for the faint hearted. You're going to have calluses on your hand. Your feet are going to hurt. You can, as we were out there, you know, digging, building the, the, the bed boxes. You, you ain't got to take my word for it. You can ask my wife the type of labor that we had to do to sow a seed. And it's continuous labor. Everything in your life, whether you recognize it or not, you may be praying for an abundance of, of blessings, an abundance of harvest. You know, matter of fact, God, I want a bigger house. I want five bedrooms. I want this. I want that. I want it to have all the bells and whistles. You know, I want a million dollars in my bank account. But God is looking down on you and saying, hey, you're not even laboring the seeds that you sow, but yet you continuously try to plant seeds out of season. And man, when we were getting different types of seeds from the store, we were seeking counsel from wise people that knew about gardening, that knew about, you know, how to plant things. We found out that, you know, on the back of every seed package, there's a doggone season it tells you to plant. And it says, hey, make sure you plant before this date, no later than this date in order to harvest by this date. But we don't have any kind of restrictions, any kind of guidelines in our own life 
on what you know seed we want to plant, when we want to plant it. We don't pray on it. We don't do nothing like that. We don't even labor it. So take a good look at the seeds that you have around you that you can continue to labor, to harvest, to reap the fruits of. Fruits, you know, harvest the first feast. And what you will realize is many of the things that you ask for, they will never be enough because you don't take care of what you have. You don't even go out there and pick the fruits off of the seeds that you've already planted. So your, your family, your loved ones, your kids, any blessing that you have asked for or not asked for, take care of it labor it because you show God that you are unappreciative when he has continuously blessed you. You're asking for more, but yet you don't take care of all the seeds that he has doggone fertilized upon your land. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe, check out the link in the description because I'm only shooting it gun barrel straight. Bow.